Thank you for inv the invitation. It's very nice to be here. It's very exciting. Um, I'm going to approach this um, uh, issue of scores uh, from the perspective of someone who writes code as a live performance, live coding. And for many of us in the area of live coding, um, uh, the, the, the language, the, the programming language, is a form of a score. So there is this question, there is this tension that will appear in my talk between the score as an idea of events in time, in a linear time, uh, but also the score as, as something that is algorithmic and, and not based on a timeline. And I find it interesting to explore in coding environment how how um, time has been re represented linearly. So my talk will be a little bit from from that perspective. So if we if we just look at notation in general, we can notate anything, and it's not necessarily always time. But there might be time element in in the notation. But it's not necessarily always a, a from left to right. Or, or, or linear time, there are all kinds of uh, concepts of time in notation. This, are, this is a choreographic um, uh, notation, musical notation, non-traditional. And here we have a code uh, notation where there is a lot of elements here that help the human to understand the code. For example, indentation, syntax coloring, uh, capitalization and, and all kinds of things that, that help to communicate what is being expressed, not just for the machine, but also for the for humans. So so in in live coding in particular, we often think of, of the computer as an interpreter and indeed the systems that we use to interpret our code are typically interpreted programming languages and they are interpreters. Uh, so our task is to maybe write the score, write the code. Um, and th there's another thing I wanted to talk about in relation to this, is the aesthetics of code. Um, and as an example <coughs> of that, I thought I would talk about the SC tweets kind of uh, uh, convention. And this is where coders try to express in less than 140 characters uh, a composition, a miniature <coughs> composition. And um, in a way it's quite interesting because you try to wrap the code up in, in a way that compresses it. So for example here we have <coughs> variable L, you put the low frequency noise oscillator into the L and then L is used all over in the in the in the in the score. Uh, nobody would write such a code uh, normally, but it's just to compress it down to the tweet, and then it becomes a bit of a, a compression algorithms here and cryptography as well involved. But it's highly aesthetic, and 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 there is a certain kind of craft and art involved in this type of, of compression. There, if you want to bring chairs, that you can. There's space over there. <laughs> um, so I could, if we are interested in in hearing such a tweet. <coughs> here's a tweet I composed recently. system here is mono. It should be two oscillators arguing <laughs> in each speaker. Uh, they, were, they were both arguing in the same space, so, so it wasn't that exciting. Um, we didn't hear the tension really. Um, 
So, if we look at code scores, what is that? How 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 has I, I guess many of you have programmed, of course, and, and, and typically we work with some kind of a loop or recursion. But there were two environments that in the in the late 80s, 90s that came up where code started to be represented as events in time. You could play scripts on a timeline and you, th this is very much related, uh, you know, kind of originating from object-oriented programming. You have sprites, and you can attach code to the sprite, and the sprite can appear in a timeline, and then suddenly the code is being triggered. And this is very helpful, obviously, for someone who is creating a narrative, a, a story, or multimedia CD-ROM. Th this was used a lot for CD-ROMs and web. So there's some kind of a, a, a narrative and story. And when these environments kind of disappeared from the creative coding um, communities because they were not open source and they were expensive and they were <coughs> limiting. Um, we started to see much more uh, processing and open frameworks and Cinder and so on, but th they don't have timelines. So you can see an aesthetic shift happening. Um, instead of narratives and, and things evolving in time, you tend to see more looping things and pixels shooting in uh, all directions and some kind of A-life uh, uh, systems and so on. So it was <coughs> that the lack of timeline in the, those environments, they changed how people express themselves. Um, but there are solutions to that then, and, and one solution is Feel, which is open source, and you can code in Python and, and, and other languages. I, I believe you have a uh, processing kind of interpreter in there and so on. And here you have timelines and you, and, and you can create <coughs> objects that are being read from that time timeline. And it's quite interesting. You can organize your your piece uh, from, from that perspective. And more recently we have the, I'm sure many of you have seen this, but this is the new <coughs> programming language from Apple. Called Swift, and it has a. I can go forwards and backwards through the execution of my game, so I can really see those effects in action. You can see the balloons interacting with each other and with the blimp, just like that. Playgrounds give me unprecedented power to see. So it's, it's called Playground, and you're able to write the loop, and you expose that onto the onto the timeline assistant, I believe it's called. And then you can scroll back and through in time and see how the code is executed. So in a way, it's, it's kind of um, a functional timeline of code. It's not a general timeline as you see in, in Director of Flash, but, but it's, it's or, or field. But it's representing functions within. Uh, we also have, so in the area of live coding, live coding of course is about creating high-level systems because we don't want to code in, in compiled languages. We don't want to code in... Um, well, we try to make things interesting from the perspective of performance. So here is a, is a <coughs> language made by Alex McLean, who I saw just here earlier, but he disappeared. Um, he's an avid live coder <coughs> and created this language here called Texture. And it's, 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 it's notation. It, we are seeing the sound engine. We're seeing w what is being communicated to the, to the temporal engine, but also the sound engine. You can put in filters and so on. Um, and in this case, I think the idea with this language was to to kind of have a go at Max and MSP's kind of statement that, that it was visual programming languages. They are basically textual languages that are, have spatial canvas. But this is properly spatial because if you move the object, it reconnects the whole graph. <laughs> and, and so a proximity between the, the, the objects changed the graph. Um, 
So you wouldn't want to sh shoot a satellite up in space to this kind of programming <laughs> language. But you might, you might have fun in a live performance uh, with the audience just to, to see this as some kind of a clay, as a, as, a, as a musical instrument or a scoring language that you're using. There are other systems for, you know, live coding. It doesn't have to be code textual. Here we have some robots. This is called Al Jazari. <laughs> it's by Dave Griffiths. And, and, and here you see robots with a thought bubble. And you can code their program with a, with a game pad. And it starts to be quite exciting when the robots start to interact because they will then have to turn away and you start to get uh, behaviors that you didn't really think of. It becomes very chaotic at some point. In my own um, work, I've, I've created a language called Ixilang, which I'm just going to show you. So a very simple programming language where you have agents and you give the agents a score. In the score you have events and, this, and, and, and the spaces are silences, so it's kind of moving like this. Um, you also have instruments. Th this is all communicating to simple definitions in <coughs> SuperCollider. So it's a language built on top of SuperCollider using the patterns that are available. Um, but here you can see that there's an agent called Path 2 and this agent is being plugged into a reverb. Um, a snapshot of the code is being taken, so when the code evolves, you can always go back to that snapshot and it rewrites the document. And every, any new code will then become uh, green, so you can see that it has kind of uh, fallen asleep. You can also see how things in the future are being issued. So this agent boss is being shaken every two seconds, every two bars. And it represents that with a yellow kind of uh, font while this has been happening. For me, this is a language, this is a notational language. Um, but I, what I wanted to present here, and, and it's something that I'll present in more detail tomorrow, actually, is this piece here called Frenoscope. And it's a, it's a live coding piece where you have um, drones or, or objects. Uh, this, is, this, this is pitch, so the harmonics, 55, 110, 165, 220, and so on. And what happens here is that you're able to write a score for it. And yeah, I'll shut up for a while. This is So the point is that normally I live code it and I have a performance on, on Thursday where I will be live coding this with, with an instrumentalist. But uh, since this is a system and every, every thing that happens is a line of code, why not represent it also in a textual format that is time based? So I did that first and then I had an array with, with times and... and uh, and um, uh, code, and since you have that array, I started to represent it as a, as a kind of a linear thing here, where each drone is represented um, with an event here, and small events that take place, for example, the harmonics going up, or 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 change in pitch, or so on, change in, in waveform, they happen as small little. You see these little boxes here. Um, 
Um, and, and that they are represented here. The, 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 the reason it's, it's uh, you see a tracker person in the audience here, the reason it goes from top to down is because the screen space, obviously, this takes a lot of space, but also because code, we read code from top to down, and, and uh, it's nice <coughs> to be able to see these events represented in relation like this. Okay, I, I think I've run out of time now, so thank you very much.